So a standard is only a standard if it's actually been used out there, if you can rely on it for interoperability. And that's the nice thing with LTI 1.0 and LTI 1.1. So what I try to represent here is this idea of adoption horizon. So when the standards have reached so much of a critical mass that it can be used and it's therefore because it's being used, it's used even more. So um, LTI 1.0 and LTI 1.1 have reached that level. Uh, I would put them well within, the, uh, within this horizon of adoption. Yeah, so I would put them right there. And they would be closed one with another uh, because really, uh, most of the time when a tool implements um, 1.0 it does also implement 1.1 um, one one. so that's basically on the uh, here on the um, adoption well within the ring so now we, we're going to be looking in the second part of this presentation we're going to be looking at basically what's what's laying outside what's coming up with LTI and try to give an idea of where they stand and how close they are from crossing that horizon so let's start so the first addition I'm going to cover is a new message type called Content Item Selection Request. It was added um, early this year, uh, February 2015, and is still in public draft uh, at the time of this recording. So, what is it about? Now with the Content Item Selection Request, the interaction is quite different. Uh, when you launch into the tool provider, you launch into the tool provider to pick up or build a resource that you're going to add back to the tool consumer. So, for example, let's take the simple case where on the two providers you could have, uh, for example, a bunch of um, of videos, right? So it could be like kind of a video videos repository, and you can have a um, bunch of videos here, and you would want to add some of those in directly into your course. So you would launch into the um, tool provider, so still an LTI launch, but this LTI launch would have now another message type. It, the message type would not be basic lunch. It would be content item selection request. And it indicates to the tool provider that now you want to either build or pick a resource depending on what the tool provider offers. So in this specific case, for the video use case, I can just say, okay, I want to pick this one. And when, I'm, when I say submit, then now on the, on the launch, there is also return URL that's passed. And I'm going. And when I press submit, I'm I'm actually returning back to the tool consumer UI using the return URL. But this return URL is a post, and in that post, I include a content item description, which is actually a, a JSON string that describes the uh, item I intend to um, to return. And the specification defines uh, the format of the content item. So for example, for video, it would define how you pass the URL, uh, the width, height, stuff like that. And so now on the tool consumer side, uh, it's, um, it's parsing the content item value and uh, basically just could add directly a new video link. So uh, that's for simple resources like video, but where it becomes very valuable is that you can use this interaction uh, to return not images or videos or documents to upload, but you can also return um, information to create a new LTI link. And um, if you remember from early on uh, when I was um, explaining how you set up a resource link, I said the best thing to do on a resource link is actually to put custom parameters. Uh, but those custom parameters, as you remember, uh, the UI to create an LTI link is a little bit awkward. How do you know the custom parameters? How do you, do you know which value to put in there? Well, with the um, content item selection request, it provides now an alternate way to actually add LTI links into the tool consumer so that you don't have to use the add external link interface. So how would that work? Well, you would go into your tool consumer and you would have a new add maybe add Cloud Lab simulation. And when you click on that, it would just go back to here to Cloud Lab. It would be a content item selection request, but now you would indicate that you want to create an LTI link. And here, maybe again, it's gonna be a, a picker of the different kind of simulation that, that, that are around. Or it could actually be even a create a new one doesn't really matter. But at the end of this process, there is 
a simulation that you're happy with that you want to add a link to. So when you press submit now, it returns back here and the content item that's posted back now contains the custom parameters and its custom parameters may be for example the simulation ID and uh, now uh, now a new link can be created so it could be it would be a new acti another activity and the activity would be like um, yeah, some, some name and when you click on it now and it's going to be a basic launch and then this basic launch will contain these custom parameters so you see here with the content item selection request you, uh, we've replaced the um, awkward way of um, setting up custom parameters with um, uh, a way with a user-friendly interface that under the cover passes the custom parameters so that the link can be properly provisioned on the tool consumer side actually have a demonstration of, of that flow in our own product called MindTap. So we've used that. This is a, a QA uh, server that we're using here. And um, uh, we have, we're using LTI in MindTap. MindTap is a courseware platform uh, from Stangage. And we're using MindTap, uh, LTI, to integrate uh, various uh, learning tools into the, um, into the course. And uh, and for us, we, we, we don't want the uh, instructor to ever have to um, enter custom parameters. We always want them to use a um, user-friendly um, provisioning interface. And so, for example, here, I'm going to add an activity from one of our LTI providers called UCU, which are video quizzing. Uh, and when we launch here, uh, we're actually launching directly to UCU now for an LTI link. But uh, as you can see here, uh, the, the message type now is no more a basic launch request, it's a content item selection request. And here in this interface, it's a picker interface, and I can pick any of these, uh, those activities. And when I'm done, I can just continue. And continue is going to post back on the return URL. And you see here there is a return URL. It's going to post back all the information needed to provide to create the, uh, this link. So it's passed back to the return URL. And you see it has the content items, uh, which is a, you are, um, encoded here. And um, okay, so this is the final step within MindTap now to uh, basically add the activity. As you can see, that's a link now. And if I click now on this one, now that's going to be a, a plain basic launch to the to uh, UCU. So we see now that's a post, and it's a basic lunch message type now is a basic lunch and we'll have here um, the custom parameters which are um, important uh, custom ref ID here which is the identifier of this activity and so that's the one that allows directly to jump when I click on this LTI link to directly jump to this activity so that's a content item selection request again a very nice interesting way to add links and other kind of resources into a tool consumer so back on the um, horizon view, content item request uh, has a lot of potential, but it's uh, fairly new. So I would put it here, you know, I think it has a great uh, future ahead. It solves um, a lot of use cases from, again, the ELTI links addition to the idea of repositories uh, and grabbing things from uh, external repository back to the tool consumer.